Welcome to this recording of SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, focusing on the capabilities of the ABAP adapter. I'd like to walk you through the details of connecting, accessing, and replicating data from an ABAP S4 system to SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. To do so, I start the data builder where I have a sprays pre-configured with a connection to an S4 system. Let's start a new graphical view and within sources, connection, the space connection becomes visible. In this case, it's an ABAP S4 system. It's important to mention at this point in time that we're leveraging the ABAP adapter to provide access to the dictionary information of the ABAP-based system. We're simply reusing the services of the objects deployed within the ABAP dictionary environment. As Data Warehouse Cloud is a cloud data warehouse system, we're interested to provide access to the source system information. At some point in time, we might be also interested to establish a data replication from the source system into Data Warehouse Cloud. Again, as I mentioned before, using the ABAP adapter, we're simply reusing the services of the deployed objects available in the ABAP dictionary today. Like if we're interested to connect to a certain table, well, we're simply connecting to the table without providing any additional services using the ABAP adapter. We're simply providing a connect to the system, which could be either a remote access or from a data integration monitor perspective, we can also establish a level of data replication. The other objects we'll have available are like the extractors, and within extractors, we're providing access to the CDS based extractors, where the beauty on the ABAP adapter is that we're, we can reuse the capabilities of the CDS views deployed in the S4 system. To make a long story short, the ABAP adapter from a data warehouse cloud perspective is supporting three fashions of data access. It's the federated access, which is true for any object we're able to connect to. It's the ability to create a one-time data load, like a snapshot, which is true for all the object we're able to connect to. And we're also supporting continuous data replication from the capabilities of the smart data integration real-time replication adapter when we're connecting to ABAP CDS views. All right, having said that, so let's get started. In the first place, we're interested to connect to a plain table using the ABAP connector. In this case, we're interested to connect to a certain table and we're interested to connect to objects related to material as an example. Once we start the search, you know, we have access to all information based on the keyword, like material. Of course, if you're interested and you're aware on the technical names of the objects, because we're connected to the ABAP dictionary, like Mara is um, a known term, if you're interested on general material data. So let's focus on Mara and run the import. Once the import is done, the system, Data Warehouse Cloud, generated a remote table behind the scenes connecting to the ABAP-based dictionary table, Mara. Once you click on the object, on the right, check the deployment status. It has to be status deployed. In this case, the remote table, like a federated access, has been established already. If you want to validate, you can click on the object and hit the data preview. So in this case, we're selecting the data from the S4 system without any persistency in Data Warehouse Cloud. So this is the simplest access and option to connect to an S4 system. Let's find out what are the capabilities based on the table connector we have in terms of data replication. To do so, we'll switch to the data integration monitor.
and the according overview of the already created remote tables pops up. In this case, we're focusing on Mara as the table. From a data access perspective, the initial status is always set to remote, like access the data in the remote system. Now, as I mentioned before, we're simply re reusing the capabilities of the deployed objects. Like in this case, it's a plain table. If we're interested to establish a data replication for Mara as a table, you can switch direct access. You can switch direct access to replicate it. And now we're connecting to the object in the dictionary. We're validating the services available based on the deployed object. Like in this case, we're only enabled to use the snapshot, like the non-refresh frequency. So this is equivalent to a snapshot, like a one-time data load. And the real-time replication is disabled as this object, Mara as a, as a table, doesn't provide any real-time replication services. So that's why it's disabled. Again, it's important to remember with simply connecting to the objects and reusing the services of the deployed objects. Now, the snapshot creation has been kicked off. It's status loading, and we, we simply let it go and come back at a later point in time. Let's go back to the data builder. Go back to the graphical view. Connection, ABAP S4. And at this point in time, we're interested to focus on the different options on the data extractors. So this S4 system provides capabilities on the ABAP CDS view as an extractor, BW, HANA, and also the service APIs. So let's get started with the ABAP CDS views. All right, so within C, let's search for a CDS view, like data extraction for sales document item. Again, so this is a CDS view pre-deployed by the S4 system. And we're simply, we're simply interested to connect to this object. Let's run the import. The remote table creation is performed behind the scenes. And once the import has been successfully completed, the object becomes available and visible within the workspace. Once you click on the object, and navigate to the right that you can check, you have to check on the deployment status, so it has to be status deployed. And as we now establish the connection, like a remote table access to the CDS view, of course, you also have the ability to preview the data. Once the preview finished, you get access to the data. Now, let's go back to the data integration monitor to validate the capabilities of the CDS view from the ABAP S4 dictionary. Before we move on, status for the Mara table, the one we initiated uh, at, a, at an earlier point in time, which is a snapshot, so this is now available. And let's focus on the CDS view. We created the remote table a minute ago. Let's navigate to data access and switch from remote to replicated to find out what are the capabilities of the objects deployed within the dictionary of the S4 system. As mentioned before, we're supporting the remote access, the creation of snapshot to every object uh, we're able to connect to. And in the case of the CDS view, we're also providing the ability for real-time replication as this is a given service from the deployed ABAP CDS view in the S4 system. So today, and this is with 
SAP Data Warehouse Cloud Wave 2020-09. We're supporting only real-time replication for CDS views from the S4 system, which is a, a great feature to establish a continuous data replication if you're interested to keep the data local in Data Warehouse Cloud, as you're not interested to create snapshots or remote data access. This might take a moment right now, so we simply let it go and we'll continue on the recording. But again, real-time replication is supported for CDS views who are supporting the services of real-time replication as we're connecting to the objects in the dictionary of the S4 system and reusing the services. All right, having said that, let's go back to the data builder one more time. Come back to the graphical view. Work on the connection S4 and check the extractors one more time. Now let's focus on the service APIs. As this is an S4 system, of course we do have extract structures available, pretty much known from uh, a data warehousing perspective. Like if we're interested on LIS structures like LIS 11, we get all the information on sales document information as an example, like item and header. At this point in time, we're interested to leverage the capabilities of the objects deployed in the dictionary related to sales document item data. Let's click on next. Hit input and deploy. And again, we're creating a remote table accessing the extract structure using the ABAP adapter. Once you click it, deployment status has to be indicated as deployed. As it's deployed, of course, we do have the ability to connect to the re remote system. Let's move on and focus on an additional extract structure, which is visible within the zero folder. It's called zero business partner attributes. Let's go and search for it. The difference on the business partner attribute is that we do have a primary key connected to this extract structure. Let's get it imported. And once the deployment has been completed, we can run a data preview on the data. So there is data available within the extract structure of the zero business partner attribute table. Let's move on and switch to the data warehouse cloud monitor. Primary key assigned to the extract structure. So this is different to the previous listed two LIS structures. And we'll find out where the differences are when we move later on to the data integration monitor. So let's get rid of the previously selected extractor and connect the business partner attribute section. Has been deployed already. And once we switch into the preview mode, we do see that there are some data available within this extract structure. We're done for this part, and now we move over to the data integration monitor. Within the data integration monitor, focusing on the ABAP adapters, we do have the ability to identify different capabilities in terms of what data access capabilities next to remote are supported. Let's get started with the previously created remote tables to the two LIS structures. Let's, let's focus on the uh, item extractor and let's switch to replicated mode. As you can see on this screen, the real-time refresh frequency is disabled. It's only supported the one time, like the non repli refresh frequency, like a one-time load, like a snapshot, as the extract structure is not supporting a primary key which would enable the real-time replication. 
So, and on this environment, we're supporting snapshots only. As you can see on the screen, the replication in the snapshot mode is being triggered, which would be also the same for the header table. And now let's move on for, to the business partner attribute table as we created the remote table on the previous steps. Once we switch to data access mode from, replic from remote into replicated, you do see that we have none like snapshot, of course, always supported. But in this case, as the source table structure supports the primary key, we're also enabling the real-time replication for this uh, service API extract structure. The refresh frequency has been identified as real-time, where within the lower part, it's snapshot. And once we refresh, we do see that the real-time replication is still going on. To sum up the capabilities of the ABAP adapter in terms of replication capabilities for data access, we see that we have the ability to support real-time replication for service API structures, which are supporting a primary key. We're supporting ABAP CDS views dedicated and supporting the real-time replication capabilities, as you can see on the screen. And for extract structures, not supporting a primary key, like in this case, the item structure, and also the Mara table. Uh, we're supporting one-time snapshot creation, where you do have the ability to manually refresh the snapshot. Thank you for watching this recording.